there it goes. So let me put this back real quick. So when you are watching the recording, you can pause it and then you can keep copying all that down. But you do have to do seven and eight first in any order, five and six next in any order, only if it applies, and then one through four in any order. You won't have one and two happening at the same time, right? Because if you have a number on the outside, you're either going to be adding or you're going to be subtracting it. You're not going to be doing both. Okay. So if I look at example eight, part A, okay, we'll talk about what I wrote down on part B. This is just, just a reminder for myself. Um, but if you look at example eight, part A, you have three transformations that are happening. Okay. So there's three transformations. One of them is a reflection, and I have to do that first. So the first one I have to do is the reflection. And how do I know I have a reflection? You see a negative either on the outside of the basic function or a negative on the inside of the basic function. Okay. And for A, my basic function. And this is shorthand for function, by the way. It's like an exponent of n, but with a little underline. That's just how to write function shorthand. So I don't have to write the whole word. So if you see that little fn, that's all it means is function. So my basic function is this one. I won't write f of x because they used f of x. I'll just write y. So y equals the absolute value of x, okay? Now the absolute value of x, if you remember from the 2.6 chart, somebody asked about that in the last class and I don't remember if I caught it on the recording or not. So I just wanna kind of bring it to everybody's attention is that they asked the question, where did all my points come from? I kept using negative two, negative one, zero, one and two. And why was I using those points? Where are they coming from? Um, they are coming from the 2.6 items. So remember how we had these in 2.6? They literally gave us five points for every single basic function. They did it for the square. They did it for the cube. Um, they did it for the square root. Oh, you can't see. They did it for the square root, for the cubic root. They did them all. They gave us five points for every single one, even the absolute value, okay? So these are the points that I'm using whenever I was doing the problem for my original basic function, okay? And those will be the same points that I use today. So since this basic function is this, my points, my original points, are going to be negative two, two, negative one, one, zero, zero, one, one, and two, two, okay? And these are coming from the 2.6 sheet, okay? If you start to use them enough, you memorize them, which is why I didn't have to keep going to the 2.6 notes, because I've seen these five points for every single function like a million times, right? But you as a student needed to know where those five points were coming from. And so I was glad that they asked. Okay. Um, so as we use these points, we have to first apply the reflection. Okay. Now notice that the negative is on the outside, right? Which means if I go over to that little cheat sheet that we have here, if the negative is outside the basic function, all I'm doing to all of my points is changing the y value sign. So in whatever the y value sign is, it will now have the opposite sign, okay? So what that means is that these points will turn into the x's do not change. Nothing changes about the x's. Only the y's will change sign. So then these will turn into negative two, negative one, there's no such thing as negative zero, negative one, and negative two. 
Okay, negative zero is the same as zero. Zero is neutral. So those are my current points, okay? After I've applied the first transformation, those are my points. But now I'm going to apply a second transformation, okay? My second transformation is going to be um, my stretch or shrink. However, do I have a multiplier next to this x? It's just x, right? There's no like 2x or 5x or anything in front of that x. I also don't have a number in front here, like a 2 or a 5. It's not negative 2 times this or nothing. So there's no shrink or stretch going on in this one, OK? However, we do have some shifting going on. And with the shifts, we have two shifts that are going on. We have this plus three on the inside and the plus one on the outside, okay? So we have two shifts happening. We can do them both at the same time, or we can do them one at a time. It is completely up to you. Okay, but we have to pay attention to what it says to do. So I, I'm going to get a new set of points. I'm going to move it up a little bit. And let's see what these translations are going to do. Okay, I'm going to write two of them. Okay, so the two translations that are happening is they're adding three on the inside and they're adding one on the outside. That's the two things that they're doing, okay? So if I come over here to my cheat sheet, notice, you can't see it, I'm gonna cut this in half. Like a fit it on the paper. I don't know where these little hairs are coming from. They're annoying. Okay. So notice when it says adding three on the inside. Okay. So if I add three on the inside, inside these parentheses, notice what we're doing is we're subtracting that number to the X's. Okay. So what that means is I'm going to take my X values and I'm going to subtract three. Okay. So every single one of these x values, I have to subtract 3. So negative 2 subtract 3 is negative 5. Negative 1 subtract 3 is negative 4. 0 subtract 3 is negative 3. 1 subtract 3 is negative 2. And 2 subtract 3 is negative 1. Okay. Now the plus one on the outside, that's this scenario where I'm adding a number on the outside. So according to this, that means I need to add that number to the Y value. So now I'm gonna take my Y values and I'm gonna add one, okay? So this guy plus one is negative one. Negative one plus one is zero. 0 plus 1 is 1, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Since I've done all three of the transformations, all of them have been done. It's because this one didn't have any, right? But all of the transformations are done. I can finally plot this final set of values, OK? So if I go to negative 5, and one, negative one. Negative five and negative one is right here. The next point is going to be negative four and zero. The next point is negative three and one. Second to last point is negative two, zero. And then the final point is negative one, negative one. 
And so this is the graph that we ended up with. Now you can confirm, because a regular one goes like this, doesn't it? I don't want to write it in there. Maybe I'll do it in a pencil. Just so it's real light, you don't see it real. It's not part of the answer, right? But that's the original one, okay? And when you have a negative dot here, it's supposed to reflect over the x-axis, which means it'll look like the top of a house, right? Instead of a V, okay? Then if you're adding three on the inside, it's supposed to go left. Well, the little peak, if it went downward, it does go to the left three units. And if you're adding one on the outside, it actually goes up. And this one did go up one unit. So it matches all of those translations just by using this little guide that I wrote down on the right-hand side, okay? You just have to remember the order in which to do them. You have to do the reflections first, then the stretching or shrinking second, and then the shifts last. But you could do the shifts at the same time, okay? And if you have multiple stretching or shrinking going on, like multipliers on the inside and the outside, you can also do those at the same time as well. I've never had that happen to me before, but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Now, this one was one of the ones where I don't like the multipliers on the inside. I don't know why they're really confusing to me, but they are. <laughs> so I never like to leave the multipliers on the inside. The only time you can't deal with the multiplier on the inside is when you have a negative inside the square root. That's the only time. Other than that, I'm taking those multipliers out, okay? So what I did here to get this multiplier out, because I got this multiplier of two and I don't like it in there, okay? And it actually affects not just the stretching and shrinking, but it also affects my shifting. If I try to shift this thing four to the right, it's gonna be wrong, okay? And that's why it confuses me really bad why they keep these multipliers on the inside. They don't belong on the inside. They make things way worse, okay? So what I did to get it to go out is I factored this. These two terms can be factored by two. And so when I factored it out, I just got X and I just got two. And if you're not sure if you factored it correctly, just distribute it and make sure that you get these two values, okay? As long as when you distribute it, it's correct, you get the same thing, you have factored it correctly. Then I used a rule that we have in algebra that says if you have a product and the absolute value, you can take the absolute value of each number individually. And it should be the same, right? Because regardless if A and B are positive or negative, when you multiply them, the answer is going to be positive or negative. But when you take the absolute value of it, it's going to be positive. And if I take the absolute value of the individual numbers, they'll both be positive. So when I finally multiply those answers together, that answer will be the exact same. Okay. So you do have this algebraic property that you can apply. So what I told the paper was, oh, I've got two times this thing. Well, then I can do the absolute value of the two and the absolute value of the other thing separate. And so that's what I did, the absolute value of the two and then the absolute value of X minus two. And I know the absolute value of two, it's just two, right? So I don't need to have those bars there. And this is what I'm gonna do my transformations with, okay? So I'm actually doing my transformations to this function. So I do still have a stretching situation happening. It's just not happening on the inside. And now notice, look at the number on the inside. It's not a four, is it? It's a two now. And this will get me the correct graph, not that one. Now I do have another little scenario over here because I saw in the um, homework that they had a problem, but the problem was is that this number was not divisible by two, right? So normally when you see this, you'll say, oh, I cannot factor out a two 
because this one cannot be divided by two. You can force a factorization, okay? All you have to do is make sure that when you distribute that two, that you get what you started with, okay? So if you did have an odd number right here that was not divisible by two, you can factor out a two. You just have to write that odd number over two. And think about that. If I were to distribute this two, here I would get two X like I had. And here the two times with the division of two would cancel and you just have the minus five. So this is a correct factorization. And if you really wanted to, you could just use decimals, right? You don't have to use five and a half. You could have just used 2.5, same thing, okay? So I just wanted you to be aware of that because just in case, the My Math Lab thing gives you like um, algorithmically generated prop numbers. And so, yeah, they conveniently gave me a four here, which I could factor out too, and it's obvious. But if I got an odd number, you still have to factor out the two, okay? And then this would be two on the outside of the bars with X minus 2.5 inside the bars. Just in case you got an odd one, okay? But now I'm gonna go to my, my steps. So first one I'm gonna do is my reflections. But notice that I don't have a negative in the inside and I don't have a negative on the outside. So I have none. There's no reflections going on in this problem. Now I'm gonna go to two, which is my stretching or shrinking. And I do have it, I have a two on the outside. Okay. So when we're multiplying by a two on the outside, what does this thing say to do? So here's my number, let me scoot this down. Here's my multiplier A on the outside. What it says for me to do is to multiply all my Y values by that A. Backtrack, what Y values, right? <laughs> what is the basic function here? It's the same thing as the other one, right? With the bars. So my original points are gonna be those same five points. Negative two, two, negative one, one, zero, zero, one, one. One, two, oh, two, two, sorry. So for this, it tells me to take two times my Y values. And so that's what I'm gonna do. It doesn't say to do anything to the X's. Notice that the X stays X, right? It's only the Y's that turn into a multiplier times Y. So I will keep all my same X's and I will just multiply all my Y values by two. So this becomes four, two, still zero, two and four. And then finally, my third step, I can do my shifts. And here I only have one shift and that's on the inside, right? So it's doing minus two on the inside. And if we look at the chart, one through four, those are all the shifts, right? When they minus a number on the inside, they actually add that number to the X values. So this means I'm going to add to to X values. I'm gonna do my chart over here just cause I don't have room down there at the bottom. So I'm only doing something to the X values. I'm not doing anything to those Y values. So I'm gonna keep the Y values all the same, but I am gonna add two to my X values. So negative two plus two is zero. 
negative one plus two is one, zero plus two is two, one plus two is three, and two plus two is four. And since that's the last step, right, these are the points that I should be graphing. So let's see what we get here. We have zero and four. We have one and two. We have two and zero. We have three and two. And then we have four and four. And so it's created this shape. Okay. And if you look at this, the two multipliers should make the graph more narrow. And if you look at the original, it is more narrow. The other one is wider, right? So this is narrow. And because of the minus two, whenever you have a minus two, it shifts it to the right. And it did, the little point should be here at zero, but now it's over there at two, okay? So it did do the transformations that it's supposed to do. So not only do you use this bit, the outside bit, to figure out the points, but then you can use this inside information to figure out if it did what it was supposed to do, okay? Kind of like to double check your work. So of course we have more examples, we'll get to them. Uh-oh, there goes the light. Okay, let's try our next one. And as always, if you don't get to scribble everything down, no worries when I post the recording or when I post the sheets, right? Because I post both the recording link and the, the pages. You'll be able to scribble down whatever you, whatever you missed, okay? Um, but I'm gonna keep using that little box. So it's gonna keep coming up. But we need to talk about this one. This one's tiny bit different from the other one. Because this one, my basic function is not absolute value of x. Here, I see the square. So my basic function is actually y equals x squared, which means I have completely different starting points than the other two problems. For y squared, the five points were this. Those are the five points from section 2.6 for x squared. So I do have a reflection. There's obviously a negative, right, in front of the x squared. I'm gonna start writing something different. You'll see what happens as I go, okay? So I have to do the reflections. And there's a negative on the outside, okay? According to this, if there's a negative on the outside, it says for me to turn my y values into the opposite sign, okay? So that means when I do this box, all my y values are gonna change signs. Zero doesn't really change a sign, doesn't even have one to change. But it never said anything about X. X stayed X. So these guys will stay exactly as they were. Then the next one was the, um, what do they call it? Shrink stretch. Okay, 
So I already have this negative in the K in the problem, but now I'm putting a one half in front of it. Okay. Now you're not considering the negative because you already took care of the negative. You're only talking about the one half. Okay. Now notice that that one half is outside the square. It is not like in a parentheses with a little square at the top. Okay. It is outside. So when you have a um, multiplier on the outside, what does it get a pupil tell me to do? Um, if I have a multiplier on the outside of the basic function, it says to multiply my y values by that number. Okay. So I'm going to be taking all of these y values and multiplying them by one half. So I'm not changing my x's at all. But if I do half of negative four, that's negative two. If I do half of negative one, that's negative one half. Half of zero is still zero. Half of negative one, negative one half. And half of negative four, which is negative two. Okay, you're not multiplying by a negative one half. You already multiplied by the negative. That's how all the signs changed. So you're just multiplying by the number. Now for the shifting, all they did was take this guy and then add four to it, okay? So you're adding four on the outside of the square. It's not X plus four inside parentheses and then the little square on the outside. It's just X plus four off to the side, okay? So on our sheet, when we have, um, let me scoot this down a little bit. When we have, the whatever the basic function is, and we're adding four like off to the side, we actually add that value to the y. Okay. So when I create my table, the x's are going to stay all the same x's, but the y's are going to get added with this four. Okay. So I'm doing negative two plus four, which is positive two. Oh, the fractions are not nice. Negative one half plus four. I don't like that. I'm gonna put it in a decimal. So it's actually 3.5. Decimals are easier because you know where they are when you graph them, right? Um, let's see, zero plus four, that one's easy. Or not zero, yeah, zero plus four. Now negative one half plus four is gonna be the same 3.5. And negative two plus four, I already did that. It was positive two, right? Now that we've done all three, we're gonna go ahead and graph it. So negative two and two, um, negative one and three and a half, it's up in the middle there, zero and four, and then one and three and a half and two and two. And so then the parabola looks something like this. I'm trying to connect the dots right, but you get the idea. Okay. Now remember the original. Um, two and four. So this is kind of, I'm trying my best to draw this thing, but that's kind of what the original looks like. So it did get, it should be more like smooth right here, but it's really hard for me to draw that. It's not sharp. It's real smooth. I just cannot draw. Um, it did get wider, okay? And the reason why it got wider it gets narrow when I multiply by a number, but if that number is bigger than one, this number was not bigger than one, it was smaller than one. And so it actually made it get wide instead of narrow. Okay. Um, so it did get wide a little bit. It did flip over, right? Because of the negative, 
instead of it opening upward, it's now opening downward. And then it did go up, right? The little point used to be here, little uh, low point. It's called a vertex, but the little vertex is down here, but then now all of a sudden it's up there. So it shifted up four as well. So we've applied all of our transformations. Now the next problem, this is the last example. We just have like, I think three or four different parts. Okay, so normally you're gonna be doing this. So normally you're gonna be identifying the basic function, figuring out if there's any reflections to do, any stretching or shrinking to do, and any shifting to do. This is the normal kinds of problems that you'll see. This is the normal application that if you're gonna take anything with you as we move along, it's gonna be this stuff. However, they really try to test to see if you understand what's going on. So then they try to give you problems like example nine, where they say pretty much throw out the basic functions and use this function that I give you, okay? And so if you use this function that I give you, I want you to do all these different transformations, okay? And there's four of them. I think uh, part A says to add three on the outside, add three on the inside, this one has two things going on, and then that one has a reflection, right? So they want you to take the graph they give you, okay, and then draw the transformed graph, okay? And so this is where this point idea is really, really going to help us. So the first thing you want to do is identify all the major points in the original graph, okay? So this didn't have a dot there, but I put a dot there because I felt like if I'm gonna have to draw this little like sharp edge and I'm gonna have to draw a hump, I'm probably gonna wanna know where the top of that hump goes, right? Um, so that's why I added this extra little dot in there, okay? Because I wanna know if the hump's gonna go like higher, lower, if it's gonna be the exact same kind of hump, you know what I mean, all of that. So we, I added this point in there. So I'm just going to list the coordinates of one, two, three, four, five points. So the coordinates of this guy are negative four and zero for y. The coordinates of the little hump is negative two and positive two. The coordinates here are zero and zero. The coordinates of this little sharp point is negative four, no, I'm sorry, one for x and negative four for y. So positive one for X and negative four for Y. And then the coordinates of this point are three for X and zero for Y. So those are my basic function points. Now, if we try to apply the transformations that they asked me in part A, this is adding a three on the outside, okay? So if I give you this paper, if I'm adding a number on the outside, it's this situation here. And what does it tell me to do? It tells me to add three to the Y values. So this means add three to Y values. So what are my new points gonna be? X's will all be the same. But my Y values, I will have to add three. So the first one will become three, the second one a five, a three. Ooh, when I add three to that, I get negative one. And then when I add three, I get three. And so these are gonna be my new points. So I'm gonna go negative four and three. Um, negative two and five, zero and three, one and negative one, and then three and three. So before I connect these dots, we do have to think about what's going on. If you're adding three, all it should have done is just move the graph up, right? So if this was a hump and that was a sharp edge, I'm gonna have to emulate that exact same behavior, okay? So these three points are for my little hump. 
this one kind of just took the parabola and kept going down. But then this other half looks like another part of a parabola, right? So you got to kind of make it a little curvy. But I'm just trying to emulate the image that I already had. So all it did was take the whole thing and just move it up three units. Now this one's like separate problems, okay? So I'm still looking at my original points and I'm gonna do one thing to them, okay? But this time, they're adding three on the inside, okay? And when you add three on the inside of the parentheses, that's actually gonna subtract the number from your X values. So we're actually gonna take, um, subtract three from our X values. which means your original y's are all gonna stay exactly the same. You're only gonna minus three from your, your x values. So negative four, take away three is negative seven. Negative two, take away three, negative five. Zero, take away three, negative three. One, take away three, negative two. And then three take away three is zero. And let's plot those. Negative seven, zero, negative five, two, negative three, zero, negative two, negative four, and then zero, zero. Now again, when you're adding three on the inside, it's actually just moving the whole graph to the left. So it should have the same sort of shape. It just scooted the whole thing over to the left, okay? So this will still be my little hump, continuing down. And then this is like another little part of a parabola. So it's a little curvy. Okay, we got two more. So we have these two and they're on the same page as that little square that I've been using. Okay. We don't have any multipliers, it looks like. We have reflections, but I'll scoot it down when we need them. So here, you don't have the multipliers. Okay, you don't have any reflections because there's no negatives next to the X or next to the outside. So no reflections, no um, shrinks or stretches. All you have is the shifts, okay? You have one shift on the inside and then one shift on the outside, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna rewrite the original just because they're on another page. So the original points, because we're going to have to move those, but I don't remember what they are. So my original points were these guys. Negative 4, 0. Negative 2, 2. 0, 0. 1, negative 4. And then 3, 0. 
those are the original points to this original graph, right? But now when I have a minus two on the inside, okay? Let's see, there's two things that are gonna happen. So when we have a minus two on the inside, we actually add that two to the X values, okay? So here I'm gonna add two to X values. And I also have a plus three on the outside. So if I have a plus three on the outside, that actually says to add the same number two, or I'm sorry, three, add whatever number's here, it's a plus three in my problem. So I'm gonna add three to the Y. So over here, I'm gonna add three to Y values, okay? And you can do those at the same time because you're doing one thing to the X's and one thing to the Y's. You're not having to do something to X and needing to know which one goes first and which one goes second, okay? You're just doing one thing to each set. So when I create my points now, we're gonna do these computations. So if I add two, I get negative two, negative one, two, three, and four. And if I add three to the Y values, adding three to these guys, I will get three, five, three. If I add three to this, I get negative one. And then if I add three, I get three. And let's talk about what that's gonna ha what's supposed to happen, okay? So if you're minusing a number on the inside, it's supposed to go to the right. So this thing should be going to the right two. And then if I add three on the outside, it's supposed to go up, right? So it should also be going up three. So that's what should be happening. So it should have the same kind of shape when I graph it. Same shape, the shape just would have moved to the right and up, okay? So let's see, negative two and three, negative one and five, two and three, three and negative one, and then four and three. This doesn't seem centered. Did I write the problems right? Negative four, zero, negative two, two, zero, zero, one, negative four, three, zero. So I added two. Oh, this one's wrong. If I add two to negative two, I don't get negative one. If I add two to negative two, I get zero, that's the one that's wrong. And then if I add two and I add two and I add two, yep, add three, add three, add three, add three, add three, okay. This one looked off center, right? It's supposed to have like a little hump, but it looked off center. That's how come I knew something went wrong. But it's supposed to be here at zero five. Now that looks like the little hump that I'm supposed to have. It wasn't supposed to warp the shape. It was just supposed to shift it around, right? So I knew I had something wrong. So I'm gonna draw my little hump, keep it going, and then do one like in the other direction. Now, finally, we have the last one. And since we already have the original points over here, I'm just gonna use these original points to do what I need. So this one has a negative on the outside. And if I shift up real quick, when you have a negative on the outside, you just make the Y values change sign, okay? So I'm gonna take all of these points and I'm just gonna change the sign of the Y values. Now, zero doesn't have a sign, 
So it's still zero. Two will become negative two. Zero stays zero. Negative four will become positive four and zero will stay zero. And then I'm gonna keep all my X values the same because those do not change. And so when I plot this, negative four, zero, negative two, negative two, zero, zero, um, one and four, and then three and zero. So now what does a negative on the outside do? Down here, a negative on the outside reflects across the x axis, which basically means whatever the graph was up here, it flips over down here. So if you had a hump going over like this, when it flipped over, that hump is now here. Okay. And then we know that our hump is supposed to extend to that point. And then instead of going in this direction, it's supposed to go in the other direction for the little curve over there. So it's the same image just flipped over. So that's all I have. That's the end of 2.7. I don't want to get into another section until another class period. So as long, this is like the main idea, right? <laughs> this ties in everything that we talked about last class and all the examples that you'll see in the um, homework, okay? Some of them are just asking you like what's happening, you know, and so they want to know, is the graph going to go up, down, left, right? Is it going to stretch or shrink or is it going to reflect? OK, so some of them are just identifying, but then other ones are actually asking you to graph it. OK, and so you definitely want to use those points to help you navigate your way through there. OK, and now you know which order to go in. OK, so it doesn't matter which one you do first, because something's happening to Y, something's happening to X. So you could do them both at the same time if you wanted. Same thing with five and six. Something's happening to Y, something's having X. So you could do both of these at the same time when you're on this step. And then the same thing with three. You're not going to have both of these situations happen, only one or the other. And you're not going to have both of these situations happen at the same time. It's only one or the other. Okay. So you'll either be doing, you'll be doing something to Y and you'll be doing something to X. So you could do both of those steps in the same step when you're on the third, fifth part, okay? But other than that, that is all I have. If you have any questions, let me know. And if you come up with any questions while you're working on this assignment, um, definitely text me, okay? That's the fastest way to get a hold of me in the weekend, okay? But other than that, we're gonna finish again just a little bit early. It's only 1.15, so if you have nothing for me, <laughs> you are free to go, but if you wanna hang back ask a question you're sure welcome to do so but you guys have a good weekend have a good weekend you too you too